rifle and meat cleaver to murder his entire family. In each case, the perpetrators were fathers. State police say this string of domestic homicides appears in the Hi, in this video I'll show you how I created this animation in Blender. So, be with me until the end. If you are interested in learning the latest 3D techniques, particularly in Blender, be sure to subscribe to the channel. I've already designed the scene, but I didn't record the process because it was messy, and I experimented with different ideas. I also have several point lights in the scene, but I haven't configured them properly yet. The models don't have any materials applied yet. Let's create in the shader editor. I downloaded all the models using bridge software. I explained it in the tutorial here. Let's render the scene using the EV render engine and then we'll adjust the lighting. The materials should be simple. I only need a albedo, normal and roughness map, along with a math node to control the roughness. Using the multiply operation is the best choice for the math node. Alright, let's now focus on creating a floor material. To gain better control over the roughness, it can be helpful to use a contrast node. To speed up the process, I'll skip over some steps, as they follow a similar approach. For the paintings, I used AI to generate nature-themed artworks. I applied the wall roughness to the paintings to create a dirt-like effect on them. For the other paintings, I only need to modify the albedo. Some objects, such as this light, also have an emission texture. We need to set the right value for the emission, as I haven't enabled glare effect yet. The glare effect helps to make the results more noticeable. By increasing the light radius, we can achieve smoother shadows. Additionally, I need to enable jittered shadows, which will fix the shadow leakage issue. I've explained this in detail in the tutorial here. I'll also reduce the light strength in the world settings, as some areas have poor lighting. Let's set the light intensity to 200 and then duplicate it across other areas of the scene. The light here should have a more orange hue. I also need to add two ambient lights here, ensuring shadows are disabled and the radius is increased. The hallway is too dark, so these lights are essential. I'm basing the setup on the references. 
Great, now let's add post-processing effects in the compositor. Ensure the real-time compositor is enabled. First, we'll need to add a glare node. Now let's switch it to Bloom and tweak the settings to get the best result. Next, the second node we need is Lens Distortion, as it adds a cinematic effect to the scene. Next, we'll adjust the scene's color. I'll apply color balancing to improve the overall look. Alright, uh, this is my final scene. Let's move through it and take a closer look. Now it's time to rig and animate the main character from PT. I found this character on the internet. I'm not aiming for an advanced rig since I only need to implement a single pose for the character. I'm using Maya for the rigging process because I'm comfortable with it for tasks like rigging and it offers great capabilities for this kind of work. Blender also offers a good rigging system. Ultimately, it's up to your preferences and circumstances when choosing the right tool. Place joints in logical positions throughout the model. Adding more joints not only gives you better control but also results in more accurate weight distribution for the skeleton. Next, we'll connect each joint to form a complete rig. Make sure to mirror the joints as well. Now let's test the rig. Some joints need to be adjusted. Finally, I'll add IK to some joints to make the animation process faster. Now it's time to animate the character. I'll keep it simple with just an idle animation. I didn't set up IK for other parts to create curves, since as mentioned a simple animation is all that's needed. I'm working on applying this pose. Even without textures, this looks quite scary. Now let's create the breathing animation. Alright, done. Let's place the character inside the scene. I need to set up the animation so that it loops seamlessly. Next, we need to configure the materials. The process is similar to what we did for the other objects. The only difference is that I need to use subsurf scattering for the character's head material. Okay, this is beautiful. I mean, uh, scary beautiful like this.
Next, I'll activate ray tracing as it greatly improves the result. I've explained it in detail in the tutorial here. Next, I'll configure the color space. Now let's set up the camera. The focal length of 30 works well, as it gives the impression of being inside the game. I also need to enable depth of field, as the character will be moving closer to the camera. Now let's wrap up the project by animating the camera and setting up the final scene. I plan to create a scene where the camera or main character enters and takes a few steps forward. Next, he collides with a soda can. Following that, the woman appears, the lights go out and she attacks us. I need another window here, so I moved it to my second monitor to get the result from the camera's perspective. The first step is to simulate the walking animation. You can use game walking animations as references, but make the animation more cinematic. This is where the soda can enters the scene. I need to adjust the can's animation curve to create an exponential movement. The woman should appear at this frame, right when the camera reaches the end of the hallway. At this point, I need to apply the flickering animation to the lights. At this frame, the woman character approaches the camera and all the lights go out. Look at this. At this distance, I can fine tune the depth of field more effectively. At this frame, the camera falls to the ground. Let's see the animation. Okay, good, let's render. I hope it didn't scare you. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And feel free to share your questions and ideas in the comments.